Mr. President, good afternoon, and I greet you all in the wonderful and the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we are gathered here this afternoon for the homegoing service and to celebrate the life of Nigel Anthony Ferrier, I would like each and every one of you to stand at this time as we enter into our time. So, Father, we give you praise, Lord, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you thanks. Almighty God, we your children come before your throne of grace, your throne of mercy, in no other name but the precious name of your son Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God, for life, for health, for strength. We thank you for even this situation. 
creation, God. For your word says that you are beautiful for every situation and in everything, Almighty God, we must give you all of the praise, the honor, the glory, and thanks. So I pray, Almighty Father, that you would lift, oh God, lift out your spirit, which we stretch hand, Father God, and you would have touched every person that is in this place, Almighty God. Touch the family, the bereaved family right now, oh God. Touch every member in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, even the well-wishers this evening, oh God, the hand of mercy, grace, and compassion will be upon them, oh God. Cover this place with your precious blood. Cover every heart with your precious blood and every life. Father God, you take charge and you take control of every proceeding that got to take place here, Father. And we declare, God, that your name will be given all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray the thanksgiving and all God's people say, Oh, 
one system. Eight person, one system. But I'm here in Martin Cornet. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone to come and show us support. I really appreciate everyone giving the time to come here to support. Um, it's very hard to say that I come to the first time to Trinidad to see my brother when he's dead. You know, it's very uh, heartbreaking to me. I have to ask time off for my work. I work with Bans DIH. <clears throat> anyway. We grow, I know him, same father, different mother, my mom different, the same father, goes on to rest purpose. But I knew him, I can recall when I was only 13 years old, and I, then my father said, this is your brother, one of your brothers. This is when I knew him. So when I knew him, he comes, I, we get to know one another as brothers. We used to make, uh, at, at the time they had the matchbox, we used to make uh, vehicles, we like the cars, you know, the carts. We used to put the, 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 the pint up, the string, we used to roll together, you know, we both, you know, we used to do that. And we used to swim together. Back in days in school, because we went to school together, we went to the same friends. I also is a, I want your big for him. So, his hobby is like, he loves to, he loves to enjoy himself when it comes to uh, swimming and he likes to, uh, he was a mechanic, first of all, he was a mechanic. He loved to get himself in grease. You know, he loved to, um, he always fixing something. And he break it fine. When I have a bike, um, my, um, I have a bike, he used to fix my bike. You know, he used to lose up in pieces and fix it. He's gifted in that when it comes to servicing bikes and, 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 and you know, engine and so on. Very gifted. But um, what I recall is that um, 12 years ago at my workplace, Bang's Day Age, he said, Chris, proceed. I'm going to train that. I know when I see you again. I was working at the time, at the moment, you know, he comes. So I said, We're not come back. He said, By me, no. Marley taking me to straight down. I said, well, do you think? I guarantee. Anyway, left this 12 years now. Only on the phone, I see my brother. Only on the phone, not in flesh. I said, why? When you come together, when you come and come and see me, you know, yeah, I have a home, you can chew back and let enjoy yourself because we love to ride and put the bike together. I like bikes. We ride together, we go on circuit, you know, watch car race and so on, you know. He said, man, may come. I said, hey, well, look like you're coming. It's best I come. And he said, yeah, right. I said, well, tell me when, and you know, when I have a vacation and so on. You know, bounce to give you a vacation, so I'm going to come. And you really never meet. Friday, the day when uh, the day when I called my brother, I mean I hear that my brother sick. When I hear my brother sick, I need to get serious because you know he's a person who don't talk his problems. I always keep to himself. So when he kind of called him, he said, um, I said, I hear sick. He said, I want no more, I just like thing, you know. I need to cover. I said, What, well, you're walking? I said, Here, you're walking. He 
he said, um, no, he work in rental, but he can get back to work in work somewhere else. If I had known the situation, I mean, I only hear it, but it's sealed. When Marlene take a picture, because I asked her, when she said, why are you going to stay bad? I said, flash a picture, send it to my phone. And she flashed the picture, sent to my phone, and that was Saturday. When I see my brother, this is not my brother. Why is not my brother? The way how I see is, is impossible, is my brother I see. So I flashed the picture to all my brothers, them. I'm a brother and sister, one sister. I sent the wrong because they, my brother and sister they outside and they're in a different country and so on. I'm from Guyana. I get a phone call, the big bird call and say, hey, this is my nice. I say to my just not happy that they get asked, the other one's called Big Walk. In the hospital. Next 20 minutes, I get a phone call. I go bail out because I have a 12, I think. Hey, your brother's passing me. I can't sleep in the good morning because it's after 12. It's so important that he could tell us as brother and sister that he's sick and he needs help. We as brothers and sisters that suffer us, we would have helped him. Some of y'all guys who around here used to take food, they would have told y'all guys and you know for taking some food towards him because he's been cooked. This guy no ox, just quiet. I want to thank you all guys for supporting my brother in that line. But I'm hiding the line. I said, if you cannot be in Guyana, um, in Trinidad, come back to Guyana. I have a home. I have two home, uh, buildings home behind my home. I'll put you back behind my house and I'll support you for two years till you catch yourself. He said, um, this, I don't know if can, but if not, if it don't succeed, then I'll, I'll come back home. And I know my brother, Andrew, if I call him and tell him that. I support the Nigel. I never run out of money and call him. He said, that, yeah, I know he would send me money. I wouldn't call the rest. I mean, he'd be probably loud, but I would move out to the country. But he did show weakness. He did not show, he did not show no, um, that he was suffering. I would say suffering. He did not show that. He always tried to be above, which is not so. It's very important for me and the family because I couldn't be alive today if I had known and seen that kind of picture that what I see with my brother. It is when I get serious because you know he start things like you know yes everything is okay. I gotta come see my brother when he's dead. Like come and see my brother in the I mean, he's supposed to be alive when they come and see him. Because I always want to come train that to vacation. You know, the company sent us to vacation, you know. It was time to go, especially when you get a lot of someone like me, 30 years in balance. You get promoted, you get allowance to go where you want to go. Anyway, forget about that. I want to say two things. The family that will support him when he was over here, thanks very much. And his friends, thanks very much for supporting my brother. And um, 
second thing is that, and that's the most important thing. The Almighty God, may His soul rest in peace. Anyway, thank you for it. Uh, thank you for it.
that their death is caused. Of course it does. God understands the pain that you go through. God understands the suffering that you go through. And he knows your loss. Jesus knows your loss because he himself has experienced, God himself has experienced the loss of his only begotten son. But we must understand as we remember the death of Lazarus, even when Jesus says, friend Lazarus died, the Bible said that he wept. Why did he weep? He weeped because he felt compassion. He had a relationship with Lazarus. Lazarus was his friend. And when Lazarus died, Jesus wept because he felt the pain. He felt the sorrow that, that you know, we would have been feeling today or you all are feeling today. And I want you all to understand this. As a believer departs and he resurrects, he is resurrected in Christ Jesus. So you have to understand that your mourning is something that is natural. It is natural to cry, it is natural to grieve, it is natural to mourn when your loved one dies. The Apostle Paul even went on to say, you know that when we rejoice in the Lord, that your rejoicing is supernatural. And he explains that. And he says that we react differently than those who do not have no hope. Those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, they have no hope because they do not know where they are going after they leave this earth. But the Bible tells us that we can be rest assured when we leave this earth, if we believe in Jesus Christ and when our eyes are open, we are going to be in the presence of Almighty God. And this is the assurance that we have. So we as believers, we rejoice when our loved one in Christ died because we know that their pain will be no more, their suffering will be no more. They have nothing to worry about after they left here. For the Bible says it is appointed at the man who wants to die. And after that is judgment. So each and every one of us have to understand that. The Bible says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, save the spirit that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. So whatever good that you have done in this life, whatever good the believer has done in this life, his works will follow him. Whatever good he had done, how he had loved the Lord, how he had served the Lord, how he had helped build the kingdom of God, how he had evangelized, how he had done things in, in the presence of God. All those works will follow him. And the Bible also says, not only do our rejoicing is supernatural, but we have an important reality to realize. You see, the Apostle Paul is telling us that if we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we also believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we must understand that no topic is more comforting to us than, than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That there is hope that only we as Christians have, and this is the hope that we have as believers. And he's, he's explaining to us that the privilege of the deceased saints, when Christ returned, he will bring those deceased believers with him. And the Bible says, while we grieve, we grieve their loss, surely they rejoice and anticipate the day when they will be first to see the resurrected Jesus Christ. You see, we cry as believers, we grieve their loss, but they are happy. When they live here, they are happy, they are joyous, because when we live on earth, we live as to be with the Lord, to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord, and so shall we ever be. And every believer has the opportunity of having a triumphant return of Christ. And we are told that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when Christ comes from the second time, it will be no longer in a manger. He will no longer be wrapped up in swaddling clothes. And he will, he will announce by a single star to wise men or by angels or shepherds, but he will come wrapped in glory and splendor, an earth-shaking shout of an angel, and the Bible says, 
trumpet of God will blow, and so shall we be the first to see him. Who shall be the first to see him? The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. So even though we are alive, we will not be the first to see him. The dead in Christ shall see him first when Jesus made his second coming. And then there is going to be a triumphant reunion where all will be reunited. And as we reunite, we got to understand that after the deceased saints are resurrected to be with Christ, in his glory, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, we will be reunited with our fellow believers who we have lost. And we got to understand that all will gather together to be united with Christ in his glory for the rest of eternity. So brethren, this can only happen this can only happen if we live for Jesus Christ on earth. This can only happen if we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior upon the face of this earth. You see, many times you go to funerals and many times you see when people pass away, you see certain things like RIP and they say rest in peace. How can you rest in peace if you do not know the Prince of Peace? And the Bible said Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. So if you do not have a relationship with the Prince of Peace on earth, how are you going to have a relationship with him in heaven? Amen. You are going to hear these words when you say, Lord, he's going to say, you depart from me, you work of iniquity. I know you not. If we do not know him here, and if we do not confess him here, he is going to deny us in heaven. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So if we do not confess Jesus Christ Lord here, brethren, we will definitely do it in, over there when we are. But it's better that you do it here, that you're going to hear these lovely words. Welcome thou art faithful servant, enter into thy eternal rest. So brethren, each and every one of us, as we sit, as you sit there and you reflect on the life of Nigel, I want you to think. I want you to think back on your life. I want you to reflect on your life. I want you to think about how your life is going. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You see, each and every one of us have an important, a very important decision to make while we are on this earth. And that important decision is where will we spend our eternity after we left this earth. A lot of people say, well, hell and heaven is right here. Well, I choose to differ. Because if hell and heaven was right here, brethren, Jesus would have not left the splendors of heaven to come to earth, to die for you, to reconcile you back to the Father, to let you know that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. He paid a price for us with his precious blood. He went to the cross of Calvary and he died for you and I, for our sins. He paid a debt that he did not owe. And today, today you have a choice. Each of us have a choice to get to make. And that choice is where will you spend your eternity. You can either choose, you can either choose to receive Jesus here and live for him, that on your last day, you are going to be present with the Lord when your eye close on earth, or you can choose to go about living like the rich man, and then you end up in that place called hell. The choice is yours. And a lot of people say, but why would a loving God, why would a kind God, why would he cause us to go to hell? God causes nobody to go to hell. God sends nobody to hell. We send our hell self in that place by the choices that he makes. So brethren, each and every one of us have a choice to make. And that choice is where you're going to spend your eternity. So I'm going to leave that choice with you. This evening, you decide where you want to spend your eternity. So today, as you all are naturally grieved, you have reason. You also have reason for great comfort. You all know if your loved one, you live for Christ, 
He died in Christ. He's going to resurrect in Christ. He's going to be with Christ. And he's going to be in a better place than he was on earth. And as heard my brother said, he never complained, but yet he was not where he looked for him to be. But I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today that when you feel your deepest pain, and when you feel your deepest need and you feel lonely and you feel like you don't know where to turn to, who to turn to, I want you to turn to the Word of God. The Word of God which brings comfort unto you. The Word of God which brings, which brings courage unto you. The Word of God which brings hope unto you. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. So if we are to go to that beautiful place called heaven, then we got to know Jesus Christ on earth. Yes. We got to know, not only know him, but we got to have a relationship with him on earth so that we can end up in that place. And each of us have that opportunity while we are alive because when we lie there, we cannot make that choice anymore. We can only make that choice while we are alive and we are in the land of the living. Brethren, the moment our breath is taken away from us, we cannot make that choice. And nobody can make that choice for us. That is an individual personal choice that only you can make and I can make. So today I want to encourage you, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, brethren, I am admonishing you at this hour. Please get to know him as your Lord and Savior. Because life is not all about what we do here. Life is not all about eating and drinking and, and, and having house and land and gold. But life is all about preparation for the hereafter. We got to prepare for the hereafter. Each and every one of us have to prepare for when we leave here, for where we're going to spend the rest of our eternity. Is that going to be with Christ? Or is it not going to be not with Christ? That choice is yours. You see, and we got to understand, even though you are grieving today, even though you are mourning today, the Bible said unto us, this too shall pass. This too shall pass because there is a time and there is a season for every single thing, every purpose under the heaven. And this too shall pass. And God will comfort you and God will bring you peace. God will bring you hope for there is only hope in Jesus Christ. So let us all stand and see. Hallelujah. So Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks, Lord. We give you honor and we give you glory. Yes. Almighty God, we thank you for the family members, oh God. And I pray, Father, you would reach down your nails, cat hands, and touch them, Lord. Heal them, Father. Deliver them, God. Bring salvation unto them this evening, Almighty Father. Let your spirit minister unto each and every one, God. I pray, Father, God, as you, you, you minister unto them, God, you will show them the way, Father. Show them the way, oh God. Let them see, let them know, let them understand that you are the way to the life this evening, oh God. You take charge and take control of their life, Father God. Bless them as never before. Comfort let your peace son, that pass all understanding be upon them, Father God. Take a hold of their life right now, God. I want it all for your honor and for your glory. As we give you all of the praise, the honor and glory and thanks. Son. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all God's people say, Amen. And Amen. Because we all give you. And after that, then we will go to the cemetery and we will conclude over there, okay? So you have an opportunity to view now.
All right. Red blood. Yeah, there's so much things we could talk more about that I couldn't make it up on stage. Actually, man put some dancing on a video, man. The man's a dance, man. <laughs> I want to tell my team real I don't speak that day. What is a good mechanic? You just fix things, you know. Good, I don't care. 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 I don't you know what I believe? When I'm out, I believe I spray a lot, you know. I spray a lot. When I'm down, I eyes call from the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to keep no fast and not to call the Father in. Yeah, I believe in His Almighty God. Keep time rich, yeah. It's time rich. And I'm uh, really sorry for not having come any past. Wait, go so you were another one, 47, 49? 47. Father God, that's a soul. You can be who or 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 who I love you. I love you, brother. I love you. I love you. But we can reach together. We can have all of us. It's just a matter of time. Each and every one of you, brother, we can reach together. I love you, brother. I love you. Sorry, sweet man. When you ready for fetching? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ready? Yeah, we ready. 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 Yeah, we ready.
and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to run, and a time to slow. A time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time of hate. A time of war, and a time of peace. Beloved, as we have gathered here to come and rest of the body of our loved one and friend, there is a form of this memory you all shall treasure and know that you all have shared a good relationship with him. But the Bible says that as you cherish the many memories that you have, that you must each focus in your heart to seek the Lord with all your hearts and to respond to the opportunities of salvation extended through you through his grace. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? We then beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of Joe, salvation. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. So, Father, we gather in this solemn place to remember the life and mourn the death of our loved one. We ask that you would comfort each family member and friend. May they turn to your word for comfort, be encouraged through happy memories and purpose in their heart to seek you while you may be found. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we now commit the departed soul of Nigel Anthony Perea unto you. We commit this body earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith.